everybody and welcome to um, EMA Knowledge Share. Um, today we're kicking off our back to live week, um, quite excitingly, and we've got four great properties from across Europe um, who are going to share some insight with us on what's happening in their cities and countries, as well as on Thursday, I just want to remind everybody, we've got um, a big sort of cross-industry knowledge share Thursday morning. I'll be sending out reminders about that later today which are where we're sharing the documents that uh, Mark, Christopher and Anna have produced um, so that we can start the discussion across industry of what Back to Live is going to look like and where, where the corporates are coming from. Before I kick off that, I would like to hand over to Elizabeth, uh, one of our council members, who's going to say a few words of thank, thank you as she's pulled this together. Over to you, Elizabeth. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> that is a logistical nightmare. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm delighted to have all of you on board um, for this great panel. And um, I wanted just to introduce uh, Penny DeWeslo from GP Associates, who I've worked with very closely over the years, and she has helped me recruit many wonderful properties um, and securing a lot of hotels. GP Associates, just so everyone is aware, is a leading UK sales and marketing representational company who represents some of the most spectacular individually owned hotels in the world. And it was established in 1999, 1995 by Janine um, Glasspole and has earned its excellent reputation over the years by promoting luxury five-star uh, hotels in extraordinary locations and also with impeccable service. You will get a little taste of some of these properties and I certainly use many of the properties and I can attest that they're all fabulous. So enjoy and we hope you get some good knowledge on what's going on in all these various regions. So Janine, uh, Penny, I'll turn okay. it over to you. Yep. Yeah. And you Thank can, you, uh, Elizabeth. Continue. What a sure. lovely accolade. Um, and Thank you. We're really thrilled to be part of this great opportunity. And hello, everybody. I recognise one or two names, I know. So thank you. Lovely to not see you, <laughs> but hopefully we'll see. Um, and thank you for joining us. Um, as Elizabeth said, we are really lucky to represent some amazing hotels across the world. Um, and today we've got the four stunning properties from different countries, so they'll be able to tell you about their different um, rules as far as they, we, they know. Um, and how they can work for you, for you, with you on events coming up um, in the next few months. We'll start with Thierry from the Beau Rivage Palace in Lausanne on the sh um, shores of Lake Geneva. We've represented the hotel for 20 years. Um, should be celebrating this year, but sadly not. We'll have to save that. And it's been hugely popular with our corporate clients, including Elizabeth, who's used it many years, haven't you? Um, we will then move to the heart of Paris and Le Bristol, um, which is part of the Oka collection. Next down to southern Spain and Andalusia and Finca Cortesine, which stands just 10 minutes above Marbella and Sotto Grande, um, and has amazing huge spaces and fabulous views out to sea. And then last, by no means least, back to the UK <coughs> and Beaverbrook, which is just 19 miles from central London, but in the beautiful Surrey Hills. So over to you, Terry. Thank you, Penny. Okay. Penny, just before we start, so guys, if I can remind you, we're literally going to talk for about five minutes on each country, your property, so how you're adapting, job. where you are in that. I'll throw some questions in. Um, and from the audience point, you know, we will then get into a discussion at the end. But if there's questions you want to raise, please, please use the uh, question profile or raise your hand and I can bring you in live. This is a meeting, not a webinar, so if you want to speak live, EMA members, you can do, uh, but let's not just jump in, um, let's find a discussion. So from my point with having a discussion with the guys earlier, um, where we are at the moment with Switzerland is open for business and open for meetings, you can book, Soteria will talk to about that, and that's the same with Spain. Uh, Paris is in a similar position to the UK, so it'll be interesting to see what, what France is doing, where that's going. And of course, Alex is based in the UK, and we're all sort of watching what else is happening in Europe as we develop. So, Thierry, I'd love to hear where you are from a business point of view and the, the regulations that Switzerland have put in place, and how you've then adopted those into your use of your event space, not your tourism business. 
Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Good morning, everyone. Well, um, very pleased to share um, the government rules in, in Switzerland. So on June the 22nd, uh, uh, we were very happy. Sorry, Terry, to, sorry, Terry, to jump in. We can't hear you very well. I don't know if you need to hold your microphone up. Oh, yeah. You hold your microphone up. Yes. Is that better? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Okay. So on, on June the 22nd, it was the third stage of uh, rule relaxation uh, in, in Switzerland since late April. Actually, we, we started again uh, resuming our business uh, in late April. So now we are authorized to organize and hold events up to a thousand people. Uh, it has to be a maximum capacity of 300 people in one room. So you have to divide uh, with a maximum of 300 packs per function room, per function room. Uh, since then, standing events are authorized again. They were forbidden before, before that. Distancing has been reduced to 1.5 meters. And it used to be two meters before that. And of course, there's always the mandatory Contact Richard, excuse me for a sec. Um, it seems that a lot of people are having a, a difficult time hearing you. Oh. Is it possible to take out the microphones and maybe that yeah. would uh, be more clear? Okay. Is this better? Much okay. better. Okay, great. Apologies. Right, so, um, uh, where was I? Yes, so there's a mandatory contract tracing um, the, taking place. The organizer must be able to provide um, up to a minimum of 14 days after the end of the event, all uh, a detailed list of the participants uh, with the contact details or contact tracing purpose. So what is happening at, at the Beau Rivage um, since then? So we reopened the, the hotel on June the 12th. Um, actually, it was like a second reopening. The hotel was originally opened in 1861. And throughout its uh, history of 159 years, it never closed a single day. So it was, it, was a, it was a big event for us to reopen. What we did is uh, when we reopened on, on uh, uh, June the 12th, um, we decided to anticipate the renovation of bedrooms. So um, there were bedroom renovations that were scheduled for the, the upcoming two winters, which are traditionally our lower season. Um, we're actually starting now with the help of, the, of, uh, of our uh, owners, which means we will have a fully renovated product from, from spring, from May 2021. And of course, we uh, put in place a new clean and safe protocol um, with uh, staff trained to understand and enforce social distancing. Uh, an example is also um, during the, the arrival uh, experience, the check-in. Uh, we don't escort the guests to the rooms anymore uh, just to, 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 to enforce that distancing. Uh, but there's, there's the possibility for the clients who check in their room to, uh, they have a video on the tablet or on their smartphone. Uh, there's a tablet available in the, bed, in the bedroom uh, where the, the rooming, so the experience of the room is explained by, by the, the member of, the, of the, the front office. Of course, there are hand sanitizer dispensers available everywhere and in each and every function rooms. The flow of guests is managed so that we don't, have too much um, crossing, mixing of, of different uh, public audiences. Function rooms are uh, disinfected before each use and uh, at, at, during each break. So actually we've had already uh, several meetings. Today we have the first residential meeting uh, since uh, the hotel reopened. So it was a celebration for us. Um, and all equipment inside the meeting room uh, are disinfected uh, during those break or before each use, or they either disinfected or uh, of single use. For example, all the stationery and so on, it's individually packed and it's only for one 
delegates. Mm. Uh, menus are either single use, so paper print, or uh, available in all, all our restaurants and available also in our, in our private function rooms. Menus can be also um, uh, used with digital. So we have QR code and the guests can, can check out the menu, the, menu the, the lunch menu or the dinner menu on their smartphone. So this is for the, the um, resume, like a, a short summary of, of the, um, the clean and safe protocol, which we, we have put in place in our hotels. Um, so we're seeing, um, we seeing um, uh, short-term business, mostly smaller meetings, uh, of course, uh, with uh, social distancing enforced. So the, the most popular um, setup are U-shaped, uh, always with you know, a matter of 50 between each guest. So um, that's, that's what we see the most. So we use the big ballrooms to actually welcome and host ballrooms or, you know, or, or, or executive meetings, small executive meetings. Um, I know, Richard, you were interested to know what happens if. Uh, so I can, if you're interested, I can, I can, I can tell a, li a little bit about that. Yeah. Where the, so for, the quickly, the, your um, event today, where are your guests coming from? Are they all? Yes, they're all Swiss. All yeah. Swiss. So yeah, so that's well, that's what we're sort of predicting. Is it so? It'll be a local start off. Absolutely. I mean, being the centre of your your you know get some transient travel coming into Switzerland. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I think we missed some of your key government guidelines at the yes. right at the beginning. I think what you told me is thousand and three hundred and yeah. Happy to start off again. This so yeah. basically we've had uh, three stages of, of rules relaxation since late April, and the latest allows us to uh, or hold the event up to a thousand people, but they have to be divided in uh, uh, by three hundred. So the maximum capacity of one uh, conference room is three hundred people. Uh, standing events are not are now authorized again. They they used to be banned, forbidden. Um, we can even go after, you know, for social private events, we can go after midnight. It used to be forbidden as well. So now we can have wedding, uh, weddings and, and, and private parties again. Uh, distancing has been reduced to 1.5 meters. And of course, there's mandatory contact tracing, from, which is the liability of the organizer only. We don't, we don't ask to, we don't have to have the list. Originally, that... It was in discussion that it should have been required by, by venues, but already, uh, eventually uh, the, gov the federal government only required that the event organizers hold uh, these contact details and provide them just in case something happens. Okay, that, that's a very interesting point. So guys who are working on what we're doing, I think we need to keep an eye on that. Um, but that, that's great. Um, okay, Thierry, let me let me jump across to Paul now and um, ask Paul to give us a view on France. So good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining the meeting. So I'm Paul. Uh, I'm the sales manager uh, at the Bristol Paris, overlooking the European countries as well as uh, India. Uh, regarding the property, as you can maybe see, I'm not at the hotel. Uh, <laughs> still working from home because we... Uh, we announced like a week ago that we will reopen the property on September 1st. So we still have two months to go. Uh, that is a decision that most of the palaces in the city uh, took, to be honest, um, except one, but a very small one, a boutique one. All of them will remain closed over the summer. Uh, the situation over the summer in Paris is always a bit slow and we still have a lack of demand. So I think that's the main decision why uh, most of the five-star property and, and especially the palaces, which is one more step uh, after the five-star, decided to remain uh, closed over the, over the summer. Uh, so it's gonna be almost a six months closing uh, since March 15th. So it's, uh, it's quite huge. Just like with Thierry, uh, we first opened in 1925 and we never closed that long since 1925. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely a big thing. Uh, and of course, it was, um, 
it was a huge opportunity for us to do major renovation into the property. So a lot of our bedrooms, a lot of our suites will be renovated. And uh, more than ever, we are completely redesigning our garden because we have a thousand two hundred square meters of garden right in the middle of the property. And we are redesigning with Lady Arabella, who is um, quite a famous garden designer in the UK. Uh, and it's going to be as well an event space starting from September. So outside space, event space, so quite relevant uh, for the current situation, uh, to, be, uh, to be honest. Regarding the situation in France, uh, I, sh I think you all know that we uh, reopened the borders uh, with the European countries on uh, June 15th. Uh, we still had uh, the issue with the UK, with the 14 days quarantine, but I read, uh, I think it was yesterday, that it should be banned on July 6th, uh, this 14 days quarantine, so finger crossed. <laughs> So, no, I, think we, I think we get an announcement on Wednesday, so tomorrow uh, officially, but we shall see. Yeah. Okay, okay, we'll see. But uh, I hope so, because I've booked tickets to go to France. In oh, Wales. you see? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of course, as you may know, the French government decided to, uh, to take the same decision as for the UK. But if it's, if it's removed starting yeah. uh, beginning of July, we will remove, uh, we will remove it as well uh, with pleasure. And regarding the non-European countries, we should reopen tomorrow on July 1st. Uh, it's going to be a very short list at the beginning because every country will be taken case by case depending on their uh, sanitary situation in the uh, country. So I know, for example, that Canada, Australia will be reopened, but for example, USA and Russia will remain closed uh, as for now uh, in terms of, uh, of travel. Regarding the rules uh, in Paris, so Paris has been targeted as a green area, which means great news. Uh, restaurants uh, are reopened. Uh, we still have uh, to uh, get some uh, rules, so we still have to uh, respect the one meter social distancing in public spaces. Uh, the mask is mandatory in all public transportation meaning uh, commuters, train, uh, plane, taxi, cabs, uh, all of them uh, need to, to wear the, the mask. And it's the same as well for the restaurant. So basically when you get in uh, a restaurant before to be seated at your table, you have to wear the mask. As soon as you sit seated, you can remove it. But if you, for example, if you need to use the restroom, you have to put it back to go to the restroom. So as long as you move uh, with other people and you cannot respect the one meter social distancing, you have to wear uh, the mask uh, by, the, by the law. And on top of this, as for now, we cannot set up table more than 10 people at the same table. Uh, so basically events right now in Paris uh, it's quite complicated. But once again, this is the rules we have right now. We will reopen in two months. So we're quite confident that the rules will change uh, in the following uh, two months. So we put... Okay. So you can kind of now do, a, do an event or a meeting for 10 people. For 10, you can. Yeah. So, yeah. For that, that, yeah. so I think that's... Well, we don't, can't even do that yet in the UK, except for weddings, which are a bit crazy, but outdoors up to 30 people. Um, yeah. All right, oh, I, I, I'm going to jump now across to Thierry, so we can, sorry, not yeah. Thierry, um, to Javier, and we'll have a chat about where we are in Spain, because there's a lot of relaxation now happening. Tourism is opening up for Spain. Um, and I think you're also allowed to do meetings and events already. Yeah? Yes. Morning, good morning. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. Um, as Richard mentioned, the rules in Spain are really um, uh, flexible. Uh, the borders, uh, airports, train stations are open and some hotels already open. Finga Cortesing will reopen on 1st of July, next Thursday. And um, at the moment, we don't have any uh, restrictions to uh, uh, organize events. The only question and the only uh, 
thing that you have to respect is the social distance, which is uh, one meter and a half between uh, between the between the people. And um, weddings, for example, are um, allowed. We have a um, wedding in September. Hopefully, everything is will happen, and um, and the clients they 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 want to do. Um, in terms of um, the hotel, the, um, all the measures that we are implementing are um, really uh, high in terms of, for example, all the, yesterday we did, uh, because we start on Thursday, we did the proof because we, uh, we will reopen with 150 employees and we did uh, for everybody uh, with our local hospital um, uh, all the, the tests to check that everybody is uh, safe and health. And, uh, and then at the hotel, of course, Finca Cortesin has amazing uh, spaces, then social media will be respected. And- uh, Maria, can I jump, can I just ask you to speak up just a little bit, please? Like this, for example? Uh, perfect. Oh, okay. Okay, then what I say is that when the customers arrive to Finca, we have all the, um, the instructions to take them safely to the room or do the chicken exactly in good, in good mood. Then um, all these, um, when they arrive, we will have masks for everybody. We will have the staff, or, of course, will wear wedding. Uh, but then in, in um, also we have like a small pack with the mask and with the um, high call and we in every room. Then uh, the, the space at the hotel, uh, the restaurants uh, is between the tables. We, we respect the, the, the space and everything is, is will be for us because since the beginning, uh, Finca Cortesin worked with a company called Ecolab, and uh, it's a worldwide, um, and very respected, and very uh, well-known company for um, for uh, health uh, and safety. And uh, th we follow the the rules. We also have behind um, us a company. It's a hospital company in Spain called Quiron. Uh, they are um, teaching and informing, uh, doing information to our staff. Uh, for example, every uh, before the opening, today we start to do um, the meeting. They will do the meeting with every, uh, every department. Today, for example, we have housekeeping. Then uh, we have um, um, food and beverage, then the spa, and they will explain all the rules, all the instructions that we have to implement in in in, in the hotel to to do the the safe uh, the safe instructions that we have to do. That is basically what happened in actually in in Spain. Um, basically, in Spain, the problems um, were in, in Madrid and in Barcelona. In the south of Spain, we didn't have many, many cases. And the situation in, in Spain, I think, is uh, actually is much, much better. We have, of course, we still have cases, but for example, in Andalusia, yesterday was uh, a few, but it was people, it's more people that works, for example, in farms or um, in the, in the agriculture industry, but not really a huge focus. And also uh, we have some in with immigrants that come to work uh, on the countryside and in agriculture, but not really, are not really uh, important focus in, in Spain right now. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Javier. I had to move to Paul, um, sorry, Alex, gonna get my names mixed up, yeah, I'm right in a minute. Alex in a minute to talk about the UK. Guys from EMA, any members, if you've got any questions to ask or anything you want to raise with the panel, I've got a few questions here. Start putting it in the chat area and I can pick up from there. Um, uh, that, that, you know, that's really useful. 
So Alex, from a from Beaver Book's point of view, where where are you now in in sort of getting ready? I'm guessing that you're open for tourism, um, but what are you seeing or predicting? Because I think it's very much a prediction on how you need to be ready for meetings. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, certainly the, the, the big area that we're looking at is meeting events because it's important to us. Um, I was, I'd like to share my screen with you in a second, if I can, just to kind of show um, you some of the, the provisions that we're, we're making. Some of it's guesswork. We were hoping for the social distance thing to be reduced, which thankfully it has been, which then allows us to do um, some other things on the estate. But certainly in terms of the government guidance, obviously 4th of July is when hotels and restaurants are going to be allowed to open. Um, you've got the one metre plus social distancing. Um, there is obviously the weddings um, that's, that's uh, currently being discussed at the moment. Um, and you've got the, the two households being able to meet in inside. Um, we at Beaver Rook are lucky, we've got 400 acres, so we're using some of our outside space to be able to not increase our capacities, but try and maintain some of our capacities, for example, in the restaurant. Um, if I'm just going to share my screen with you um, now, if I may. Yeah, yeah. you should be able to. Yeah, we got it. It's coming yeah. up. Uh, let me just do that there. So in, in terms of kind of Beaverbrook, and I'm not doing a sales pitch, Richard, I promise. Um, <laughs> I'll stop right, you if you are. <laughs> well, for us, we're, we're lucky because we have one way in and one way out. So you can see top right, we have an entrance. Um, and then top sort of middle, we have the exit. So we're able to control people coming on and off the estate. And we're spread over a number of buildings as well. So again, we can lock down certain areas. We've had some international interest in terms of some exclusive use opportunities which for us we're able to do it where potentially you could take the garden house which is just there on the right hand side but we could still operate the hotel with the house and the coach house as well um in, in terms of our meeting space that's how our meeting space normally looks and we've we've kind of taken into account the guidance that we've been given um and taken into social distancing so this has been based we've, we've done various diagrams um for the guidance that we've been given um, and that is our, our main orangery space. I know some of the people on the call now have, have used this space. Um, but, but yeah, our capacities unfortunately have been limited. Guidance currently for meetings and events is limited here in the UK and we're waiting for further clarity. Um, to give you an example of our garden house restaurant, this is our Anglo-Italian restaurant. I and mean, again, we've, we've had to look at where we can allow two metre social distance in between our tables, which is what we've gone for. And you can see the circular tables on the outside of that diagram. That's actually our outside space. You can see here, this is a picture of the garden house with the terrace. Now that, that kind of canopy that you can see there in the photo is something we've purely added because of we're trying to, to increase our space and give people the, the ability to use the outside space, even if the British weather doesn't play its part. Um, <laughs> and this, this is just one area at the garden house that, that we've used. Outside our orangery this week, they're covering with a canopy outside the orangery. So again, it will allow us to use that outside sort of space effectively. Um, and then kind of looking at protocol, one, one thing that we're sort of quite hot on is the education of our guests. So we're, this is a PDF that we've put together that we're sending out to all guests that are coming to the estate. So it's clear for guests, and we don't want people to kind of be alarmed, but to get on the estate you need a reservation you can't just wander on there so we're controlling who's coming on and off the estate we will be doing everybody's temperature check and also it's kind of flagging things that previously we've done we used to valet park cars but well, we're not going to be doing that i'm afraid people now need to park their cars and then and then come into the relevant house as appropriate um this is something that we've, we've invested quite a lot of money on so we have the spray guns we have five guns in total um as guests will be using public space we will be able to we will be um sort of coordinating that where the public space gets sprayed um ultimately um and we're lucky because it these guns are very effective and they will actually coat furniture and surfaces for up to 15 days um so we will be spraying bedrooms public space um and obviously sanitizing products from salt and pepper shakers on tables and, and, and everything. But, but certainly these electronic sprayers will allow us to cover bigger areas. And as a guest 
uh, before a guest checks out, the housekeeping team will sanitize a bedroom with these sprayers and also all of the other deep clean that will be going on. Um, and then we've got our protocol. So this is a little bit like the PDF. It just makes it a little bit more obvious in terms of what we're doing. But we have the protocol subject to, to what people are doing on the estate. Um, so there is a protocol that everybody will have to follow. Then there are employees protocol. And I have two days worth of training um, tomorrow and Thursday where I'm going into Beaverbrook because I'm currently at home, where we're going through our intense training. Um, so that everybody is aware of, of what it's all about. We've carried out a lot of risk assessments as well, um, where we're, we're, we're trying to sort of look at various scenarios. Housekeeping scenario, we've then got a food service protocol and then a culinary protocol. And once, hopefully, health clubs and spas are allowed to open, we will then follow that. So we've, we've got a lot of the rules and regulations or guidance in place that we're following, but we are waiting for that, for that government guidance. Um, as well. Thank, uh, thanks Alec, I think that's great. Um, if anyone's got documents, brochures like that that they want to share with our members, if you let us have them then we'll post them on the EMA website as part of this seminar because we'll, you know, we'll expect other people to, to come back to the, the webinar because we will, we will have recorded and everything else. Um, so yeah Alex that sort of stuff is great because it shows you the depth of detail that you're going into um, and everything else. Um, I think one of our biggest challenges, so I'm opening this up now for you know, the panel discussion, but I think one of our biggest channels in bringing events back to live is the psychological process for people willing to travel and go to a meeting. Um, and it's how we can support that um, within the industry and also how we can create the hybrid because I think what we see happening in the future, uh, or certainly for the next 12 months, is maybe 30 people at the meeting, but maybe another 50, 60 people who've chosen not to come to the meeting, but still want to attend or want to attend part of it through the high hybrid process. So, um, Thierry, I don't know if you want to kick off with that, how you're, how you're looking at that and being able to help support that. Yeah, we're in the process of, of enhancing uh, the technological equipment of our function space, meeting space, to be hybrid ready. So uh, my, my, uh, my colleagues uh, in uh, AV equipment and so on, so basically uh, they're um, um, reviewing all the options and all the requirements, the specs, uh, in order to, be, uh, to have a universal hardware that plays with all the, the possibilities the clients come with and whatever the, the, the software they want to play with, it, it, it's actually pretty simple. It, it, it's free thing. It's the, uh, a very strong broadband, um, cameras and sound. So uh, my, my teams are working on that and will be ready, I think, for, for, for September after the summer uh, to be a complete a hybrid ready offer for, 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 for meetings. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's the, from a property point of view, presumably it's the it's the bandwidth, the, the size of your pipe to bring in technology and take it out, and then it's down to the production company to be able to facilitate the needs of of the attendees. Um, Javier, a question to you on 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 that train of thought is: Are you do you have preferred suppliers or uh, suppliers? Let's say production people. Who are allowed on property uh, yeah. or can clients bring in their own production companies because I know lots of our members have their preferred production suppliers and contracts mm -hmm. and, and I think that is that something that may well be changing within the industry that because of COVID-19? No we don't have any um, any issue if the clients when we have suppliers but if the, the clients want to bring uh, their own equipment will be will be fine will be fantastic um, in our case um, the difference between finca and other properties that we are talking now is finca is more and more more and more um, focus on incentives uh, and small meetings we are not a corporate hotel, then most of our events happen outside. You know, because your grounds. Okay, then in the grounds we have the uh, let let me 
just show you one uh, one of two pictures that to give you an idea that Finca offers and okay this is the this is the grounds that we that we have um even if we have a meeting and space uh capacity and rooms uh, as mentioned before most of our guests they decide to do outside this is one of the pools you know uh, we have maintained the social distance um, if we have an event, we, they can do an, an exclusively, uh, they can book exclusively one of the restaurants because we have in total six restaurants and um, every restaurant, every function has the, uh, this is the rooms, for example, which is high and um, uh, this is the pool suite. But again, uh, every restaurant has, uh, this is the beach club, they have terrace. Then if basically we have 300 and, uh, sunny days per year, most of the events happen outside. This is the beach club. You can book also exclusively for the event. And this is the golf course, the villas. Then, uh, and this is the meeting space. This is the, because we have three different meeting mm -hmm. space. Uh, one of them is uh, under renovation. And this just to show you some events that we organize, of course, we will maintain the same, if we have an event like this, we will maintain the, the, the social distance. But it's very easy for us to organize uh, an event and we are flexible now. For example, most of the events that we have, uh, this year was uh, really, really, um, the, the spectator, I mean, the expectations uh, and the bookings uh, were fantastic. And most of the events, they didn't cancel. We only have one cancellation. Uh, and it was the cancellation uh, was for an event in, in May. The others, they move or from spring to fall or from next year, same period. And we were really flexible with the cancellation policy and we maintained the same conditions, same rates. Then the, the relationship with the, with the client was, was really good. Um, then we, we don't have any any issues in 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 this in this in these questions? We okay, Abby. I'm going to jump in there. To, um, that, that's fine. But the the question is also around: is the third party contractors coming on site? Yeah, uh, and it's great to let you that you say yes. That's happy and welcome. What what legal process or a relationship process would you like to go through with those subcontractors to know that they have follow certain guidelines for COVID-19. So all of a sudden you've got 10 crew coming on site with kit right. and equipment right. that well, you don't have a contract with, that we as, an we as an agent or a corporate have placed into your property. Right. And I think, you know, the, the triangular question is, who's accountable, responsible for those people now on site? Because generally in the past, very much handed them over to the hotel and not worried about them. Yeah, well, we uh, the, the the suppliers that we were with, they have to show us they have all the uh, the rules that we need um, in, in the, um, updated. This is this is some of the things that we. I mean, we we understand that our companies they have to give us the same rules that we have sure. in the hotel. That's, okay. that's the point. I mean, so so what you're saying is that you will have a list of guidelines, right? Or correct. Expectations for those third support, third party suppliers, and right. as long as that contractor signs, agrees, that can prove that that's happening, you're happy for the for that contract. Correct. Correct. Right. And no, then we, of course, of course, in the hotel, the staff will will control that every rule has been in. Has been in place. I mean, has been control yeah. and has been. We would follow that. That's for sure. Okay. Um, is anybody with any of the other um, hotels taking a different approach to that with third-party suppliers? No. Oh, okay. So that's going to be that's interesting because that was one of the concerns of our members, and I know we'll still have to see it. Is that you know we have our favourite production crews and equipment and people because we know them and trust them. But is that going to change with hotels? 
Um, so thanks for that. Um, another observation, guys, is that the, the hotels with properties, so again, back to, uh, not to Javier, is that I think there's a great opportunity for you guys. I think we, you know, the research that we've done is the incentive market will be very quiet over the next 12, 18 months. Um, but properties with lots of outdoor space and the, re the, you know, using that space differently for outdoor meetings and stuff like that, there's the good opportunity because we know that being out in the fresh air and everything else reduces the, um, the COVID-19 um, ability to, to get passed on. Um, I want to ask a question around occupancy levels. Um, and are you, I'm probably so going to have to come back, I'll come back to Thierry on this because you guys are now open, but are you restricting your occupancy levels? I know you'd love to be running at 100% occupancy, but are you saying that during this period we're going to restrict our levels? I heard, I heard some hotels that, that had this, uh, made this, st this statement uh, to answer very transparently your question no no we don't uh, because we have uh, we have lots of space a bit like Javier and Finca Cortesin the, the hotel is, is is very very large public space we have super wide corridors we have uh, 10 acres of, of private landscape park so there's, there's room to play with but if it was a tiny property with you know a very limited space, I think we would ask ourselves the question: Yes. Yeah. There's been no no government guidelines on that, um, both to um, Thierry and Javier, because you guys are operational. No, there isn't. Not in Switzerland. Okay, Javier. Uh, we don't. No. Okay. We so don't have restrictions. There, there, there was during the, the the middle of the crisis during the lockdown. Yeah. Uh, we, we kept one of our hotel open and uh, back then um, there could only be 50 people at the same time on property. So one of the our sister properties, we only opened 20 rooms because the, the number of guests plus the number of staff at the time couldn't exceed 50 people. But it's now way over. It was two months ago. Well, we, uh, uh, you, you asked before, um, about the how is moving the uh, the industry, we are still having requests for uh, for uh, uh, November and December. Is basically are more automotive uh, companies, and we are in in discussion. They are really interested to move on the the event. Then, as we we I think in in the two or three weeks time, we will know if they confirm or not. Um, and I mentioned, I say before, most of the events that we have in, in spring, we move to, to fall in October okay. and yeah. September. So, so another question that came up from our, in our membership when we're discussing um, Back to Live is around contractual agreements, postponement, cancellation. And one of the concerns is that yes, everyone has sort of moved stuff to postponement. It's going to be like so busy to get in probably into the first half of next year with all these events that have been moved. Um, and the question is, is around sort of if there's another sp uh, peak in the situation, if a property has to close down or if the situation that a country has clo closed its borders and an event has to be cancelled, or postponed. Um, yes, everyone wants postponement, but what if you can't then fit that event in? So again, I'll, let me sort of, I'll come to perhaps um, Alex or Paul on that, is that, you know, how, are you thinking about cancellation and postponements for the future and relaxing your rules or your contractual obligations around that to work more closely? I think there's, yeah. and from a corporate point of view, there are questions being asked by our members when they talk about this, but that is the one area they really need, they're, they're being told to look at and have much greater flexibility because we just don't know what's going to happen. So we want the ability to be able to, to cancel or postpone our event. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And if I um, can match as well with uh, Donna's question regarding the impact uh, that have the changes had on the pricing. I think yeah. that's a little bit the same. 
uh, we put together, I will try to uh, share my screen, but we put together um, kind of an offer with all the flexible cancellation policy uh, that has been put in place until the end of the year and then until April uh, 30th. It is, uh, it is very much flexible uh, for us and for the Paris standards. Uh, we added more benefits uh, to any kind of events. Uh, we are very flexible on the rates as well. So everything has been put together to bring back uh, events uh, at the property. And uh, consolation policy is maybe the first criteria uh, for any any events manager who wants to secure anything in the city to make sure that they can cancel uh, like just, just, out, just a couple of days before. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the minimum uh, for events. And I think that's the same even for uh, individual, uh, individual booking. We don't know uh, what the future will be. So we need to be prepared to cancel uh, at short notice, uh, definitely. Okay, and but you're you're just offering that up until the end of the year, because we know that. So that's as you can more. see, as you can see, it's seventy-two hours uh, until the end of the year, and seven days prior to the event, uh, from January first to April thirty years. That's cool. For now, of course, this is something that can be uh, subject to changes uh, depending on the on the on the situation, of course. Okay. And is that is that just your property, or is that? Uh, all, all France or all Paris or? I think this is definitely uh, what's going on in Paris and it's as well what's going on in the south of France. For example, I was, uh, you know that we have, a, we have two other properties in the south of France. We have Hotel du Cap et Rock on Cap d'Antibes. How old? The Chateau Saint-Martin in, uh, in Vence and um, Normally, July and August, they are not flexible at all on cancellation policy. And this year, I think they, they are as all of the property in the south of France. As once again, that's the first criteria if we want to attract our client back and, uh, and uh, picking up on bookings, we have to be flexible on everything, but most of all on the cancellation policy. All right, so jumping across to you, Alec, um, and, you know, I think those cancellation, flexible cancellation policies there by the, the Bristol, um, which I know is one of the grandest hotels in Paris and was one of the most unflexible hotels in Paris, when it <laughs> especially around the air shows many years ago. Um, what, what's your view on sort of those cancellations? Yeah, so certainly we've not been as specific to, to put it in writing like that. We have put it into our contracts where it's a COVID-19 um, policy where we will allow clients to cancel a booking um, free of charge. Um, we will then keep the deposit and then try and reschedule the event over a 12 to 18 month period. But Richard, we, we would work with the client on a case by case scenario. And if there was ever a situation where we really could we would struggle to actually accommodate their event because we are that busy. Um, then, then again, we would just look at it on a case by case scenario. And maybe say, well, we'll give you 24 months to rebook your event. Um, I know that we've we've had some events um, that should have happened, and they've said, well, when we're not going to put our event in the UK next summer because it's someone else's turn to host. But in two years' time, it will be back to the UK. We said, okay, fine, but let's look at, at July 2021. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's being flexible with each client on a case by case scenario. And okay. I think that's generally what a lot of properties are doing. Some will come out with, uh, sort of very specific guidance, but, but I think generally people are going to be as flexible as they can. Um, because it's all about relationships. Yeah. One of, one of the suggestions that we've had, um, which we'll be tabling on Thursday is that, um, if, a, if an event is postponed, funds, etc., are retained by the property, um, but we'd like to see it over a 24 month period. And basically, on request to rebook that event, if you can't rebook it after three attempts, then the hotel would refund the, the money because otherwise this could just go on and on and on. 
So just mm -hmm. to put that out there, that's some of the thinking that uh, we're talking about that potentially you'll see coming out as riders from some of the big corporates um, and everything else. Here's a, a silly, but it's not a silly, very pertinent question around use of toilets. So the loos. Um, so I know the you know hygiene rules in the UK for restaurants, and I think it was uh, it was one, one of you mentioned it that you know if a guest wants to go to the toilet from the restaurant, they're happy to call you put your mask back on. Like in the UK, you even have to ask, and then you you know you're shown where the toilets are. But in the UK now for the restaurants opening, it's if guests from the same group, which could be a maximum of six, I believe at the moment, go to the toilet, that's fine. They can use the same facility. But then after they've been, or after someone, an individual has been, that whole toilet has to be cleaned. How is that going to work in events? I've got a conference, 50, 60 people, Terry, up to you, up, up to 300 people in a room. How are we gonna, how are we gonna keep the toilets? sterile and clean from well I guess hours to go to the loo <laughs> well um, it's it's something we've we've always been extremely uh, uh, careful and, and cautious so we just we've just reinforced the, the, the cleaning the cleansing staff uh, so that there's always someone around before after during and uh, in terms of, of health um, it's uh, also, I mean, the, the, the groups are considered as homogeneous. So, uh, what, what, in terms of you know, government regulations, it's exactly what you said. They, they're just asking that um, groups don't mix. If it's one group, it's okay to use the same facility. Uh, doesn't matter the size of the group. That's you know what, what we hear from the federal health. Uh, uh, I see you're here. So your adaptation, so I'm overriding something, your adaptation of the, the law that Switzerland have put in place is if, it's, if you're part of the same group, you can use the same facility. Absolutely. So, so we have several a, a bathrooms. Conference. Yes, we have several I'm bathrooms. At these hundred of, yeah, okay. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, unfortunately, we're not there yet. We don't, we don't have a massive conference where you have um, uh, participants from different uh, uh, countries or regions or companies. Uh, until now, all the conference and events we are um, holding are all within one company or one department or one family, if these are private events. We don't have yet uh, open, open conferences or congresses. Okay, so as we can see that again, it's those logistical details when we come down to that, that we will have to think about for the flow of people and, you know, will, in, will a live event work? I think the, your steam guns, whatever they are, Alex, I think would be great for very quickly whisking around uh, the toilets. But again, toilets need to, and probably going to have to have an attendant in situ every day, in these sort of the cost but, yeah, it, and everything else. It's it's the it's the 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 it's the, the everything that you touch with your hands. So basically, yeah. if you have someone cleansing the counter, cleansing the um, uh, the door knob, uh, the door knob, and, and all the handles uh, very intensively, you should be fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my last question, um, and again, if there's any questions anybody wants, by people come. Um, risk management. And crisis management are two different things in my book. Risk is about assessing the situation and making sure that you've got your your I's dotted, your T's crossed, that you're preempting something going wrong or something happening, and you're looking at what those risks are and then making a calculated decision whether you continue and everything else. Crisis is, excuse my French, as we English say, shit happens something goes bad it's how you react to it so to your four properties what would be a crisis associated to covid19 i said i'd throw in a side ball to you what would be a crisis and how would you react react to that so i'm thinking that there's five of your staff are taken down with 
COVID-19, you know, you think they're ill, they're sent home, what, what happens? Few guests are, are showing symptoms, what happens? Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to, to, to share because That's we have a great man. Thank you, too. Because I'm we sure have, you have a policy now in place. We have protocols. Yes, of course. Yeah. So if, if, if a member of the staff has potential COVID-19 symptom, symptoms, then uh, we're going to ask him to her to contact a doctor. Uh, if he's home, not showing up. If he's at the hotel, he is or she is sent home. He's or get he he he's or she is get tested, quarantine while waiting for results. Uh, I don't know. It lasts for um, forty eight hours or something. During that time, that person is quarantined. If the result is okay, he can come back. If he's not, uh, then he or she goes into a fourteen day quarantine, and then the federal health agency takes over from there with a very strict uh, contact tracing protocols. So they take over, they come to the hotel, and they, we, we trace the history. What, what does that particular individual, where was he? Where was he in contact with? Who at the hotel and in his private life uh, outside the hotel? So it's, it's, it's really clear, actually. Yeah. OK. So so remember you, the staff. Do you think that <laughs> would affect the property being closed? Is there any chance of that happening? Um, it's if it's done properly, and uh, if you know, it, it all depends on the uh, the number of cases potentially of inf uh, infected. But since um, we've, we're really reinforcing um, enforcing the, um, the social distancing measures since the opening, it's 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 not likely that we would have like a huge cluster. Yeah because we are doing all of that in order to avoid, avoid a cluster. So it, it wouldn't, it, honestly, it could happen, you know, like you said, shit happens, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's very unlikely. Yeah. And the same if it's a guest, you know, if he's a guest, um, we're not gonna kick him out, but we're gonna ask him gently or, or gently to contact the doctor to get- Yeah, we talked about doctor. isolation rooms and things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. he or she can stay in the room, but has to be uh, isolated. And, and then, you know, if it's confirmed, then again, the, the federal health agency takes over. Yeah. Okay. Have, have you, I think you wanted to come in there? Or? Yeah, it's uh, basically the same in, in Spain. And uh, as soon as we uh, know somebody is infected from the, from the staff, automatically he will... Or suspected. Uh, suspected, correct? The temperature, yeah. Autom automatically will remain at home for 14 days with the quarantine. And the company will will do the test. Um, uh, as mentioned, we did the test yesterday with the with a local hospital called Hospital, and uh, and then also the we have uh, behind us. Uh, I mentioned also I said before, uh, Kiro is a quite important company in Spain, uh, private hospital company. And um, another room. I mean, we uh, if we have a, a case from a guest. Of course, we have to speak to, to them and then put them on quarantine. We will, uh, we have the villas, they could be in, in the villa, but of course everything uh, will be uh, taken seriously if we have any case from the uh, hotel guests or from the, um, from the client perspective, okay. both options. So yeah. I, I can see that the, the, where we are on, on this and you guys, you guys are live, as in the properties are now open and running events, so I'll stick with that. But it's very much about the the trace contact and trace protocols that are in place and how you as properties operate those um, and of course then us as event organizers with if any of our members uh, or guests or attendees are shown to high have high temperature and everything else that's really important the protocols and processes that we put in place um, and then if it goes beyond a certain level it kicks over to you know you, you know the your um, your health service would then step in and, and pick up on that uh, because it's definitely just this track and trace isn't it is going to be the uh, the challenge um, and the testing to quickly make sure for the blood test have they had have they got COVID-19 yeah because it could just be a cold or something yeah 
Okay, guys, I'd like to really sort of wrap up now, 9.30, 9.31, um, and say a really, really big thank you to Thierry, Javier, uh, Paul and Alec uh, for joining us today and sharing with our insights. Penny and Elizabeth, thank you guys so much for helping bring this together. Really appreciate it. It's the more and more we discuss this now across industry, the more we can um, feed in to develop the best guidelines possible for everybody in you know, returning to live, um, which we all look forward to very, very soon. Thank you very much and thank you for attending. Cheers, don't forget Thursday. And guys, you're more than welcome to attend that if you wish, just drop us a line, we'll send you a link. Bye, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you.